Hi and welcome to this video on well these composite indexes that you can you can see on the screen now uh, IVF ABC, multi D ABC, and IVF HNSW. Uh, in the in the last video in, in the series we, we sort of introduced composite indexes and the index factory in FICE. And what we're going to do now is obviously go through each of these and, and build them uh, using what we learned in the last video, the index factory. So let's move on to the first one, the IVF ADC. Uh, this is, it stands for IVF as in like the inverted file index, followed by asymmetric distance computation. If you watched the video or the videos uh, or read the articles on product quantization, you might remember ADC. Uh, ADC is, um, well, it's part of product quantization. So, during indexing, so when we first take our vectors and we add them to the index, uh, there's there's sort of two main steps. Uh, vectors are assigned to lists or the cells. That's the IVF part of it. So if I just point that out, so we're taking our vector over here and the IVF assignment is this part. So this is our index IVF. We're assigning them to uh, IVF cells, which are the, the Voronoi cells that we usually uh, visualize. And from that, you're assigned this cell ID. So the cell ID is the, the IVF part of our index. And then the, the second step is th those vectors that we've just assigned, they go through a product quantization compression step. So if I take that, it goes all the way over here and we create uh, we create a PQ code, the quantized code, and they get stored together. So the, the code gets stored in the IVF list. That is a an IVF ADC index at at its core. Now, during search, this is where the the ADC part comes in. So ADC is that that asymmetric distance computation. So we have two in product quantization. Well, when you when you quantize your vectors, you have these two alternative ways of of searching. The first, which is symmetric distance computation over here is not as popular. And what you do with that is you take your query vector, which is XQ, and you quantize it. And then you compare it to all of your pre-quantized pre-index vectors. So essentially both sides of what you're comparing are quantized. And that's why it's the symmetrical or symmetric distance computation. The alternative, which tends to work better, is where you don't quantize your query vector. So you just take XQ as it is, you compare that to your pre-quantized, pre-indexed vectors. So the quantized XB vectors. So that's where that's where you get the, the IVF side of things, and then you also get the, the ADC side of things. And when it comes to FICE, we can we can use this index factor string to put all of that together. So we have IVF on the left, product quantization on the right. So let's let's go to Python and, and put that together. So I've already imported the, the data using again the, the SIFT 1M data set. There'll be a link in the description which will explain how you can get that data set. From that we have I can show you we have XB, which is the the index vector or the, the vectors that we're searching through, and then XQ, which is just a single vector that we're using to search. And so we put that together, we just write index, FICE, index factory, as we as we have been doing. Uh, we have our number of dimensions, 128 for this data set. And then we, we want to input the, the string, the index factory string, which is, so we have IVF, which is the first part. We're going to split that into 256 uh, cells, foreign cells. And we are using PQ for the second part, which is the, the ADC part. And here we're going to use an M value 32 and a N bits value of eight. Now, by default, this is eight. So we can include the times eight there, uh, but you don't need it. The only way you, you probably need this is if you want to use a lower N bits value. So say you want to use four. If you try and go for 12, you, I, well, you, you're not going to be able to unless FICE has 
uh, updated that yet. So basically, you're not allowed to go over eight for now with the, the PQ index or IVF PQ index. But that should be being removed in a, in a future version. And then, like we usually do, we just do index train. So we need to train, of course, uh, using IVF. And, and also product quantization. So we, we really, really do need to train. Uh, and then, then we add our vectors. And then from there, we just do search as we normally do. So di equals index.search xq. Okay. And I'll run that. We'll see. Well, I don't really need to see what, what we return. But I'll show you the performance of, of that. So, I mean, while we're there, the, I may as well explain. So we have M here. M is the the number of sub vectors that we're splitting our, our full vectors into for the uh, product quantization step. And the N bits value here is, is eight, which is the number of bits used by each uh, sub, sub quantizer within the product quantization step. Uh, so you just increase that to perform, uh, to increase recall performance or, or accuracy. Okay, and then you see we, we have our nearest indexes there. Now, let me show you the, the actual performance, the, the metrics for, for this. So what we have here is a few things I wanted to compare. So we have the blue lines here are what we just built. So the IVF ADC. Then we also have the, the magenta line. That is still IVF ADC but we've added a optimization step to it. Now, for me, there was no real performance increase there. Now I just wanted to compare that to a, a simple flat index. Now the flat index, if we use that, the, the memory usage of that is something like half a gigabyte. Whereas the memory usage for our two PQ or, or IVF PQ indexes is I think around 40 megabytes. So there's a, pretty yeah a huge difference there uh, so that that's why you'd use pq in the first place to, to minimize your memory usage of the index but in terms of recall of course you can't really be a flat index so uh, let's move on to the next one uh, so we have multi d adc which is a multi-index asymmetric distance computation so the, the adc part is the same so we know okay there's product quantization in there and the multi multi d part is what is different. So this is based on IMI, which is a inverted multi index, and IMI is similar to IVF, but it where we have our Voronoi cells in IVF, IMI uses product quantization to split your vectors into sub vectors, and then process them through that Voronoi cell or, or cluster them using Voronoi cells. So it's like IVF, but split across multiple vector subspaces. It's almost like a, like a tiered Voronoi cell structure, which is what I'm, I'm trying to visualize here. So with IVF, we just have one layer, whereas with IMI, so this is IMI, not necessarily the multi DADC. So this is just IMI. So our vectors come in, they get split into two in this case, and then they get clustered based on that. And then when we introduce our query vector, we split that again into two and we find the cells that it belongs to and we find a crossover between those cells to find the, the nearest neighbor candidates. Okay, and this is using just an n probe value of, of one in this case. Now we can we can put that together quite easily using this index factor string. So we have the IMI index on the left, and then we have again PQ because we're, it's a ADC uh, on the right. So let's go ahead and, and put that together. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm just going to use the same same uh, script we use here. So I'm gonna take IMI two multiplied by eight there, or, or two, two by eight. And let me remove the, the by eight there. Now in this case, it's actually better if we include APQ. So this, in this case, it does improve the performance of our, of our index. So we'll add that. And what I want to do 
So I'm, I'm going to get a, a recall function so we can compare uh, the matches between this and a simple flat index and, and see how many of the responses it returns match or align. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to add that in here. Uh, all we're doing is, is creating a, a flat index and, and creating this, this function here to compare how many of them match. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change k to 100. And remember, we're using 10. That's a little bit low. So let's change it to 100, and then we can compare those a little easier. And the reason I want to do that is to show you the uh, performance difference we'll get when we start modifying another variable called the mpro value. Um, so let me wait for this to to finish training, and we'll we'll jump into that. Okay, so that uh, that's finished now, and we uh, so we've run this. I can I can compare or do I? Yeah, yeah. I want to do this, and I'm going to call recall on here, and we'll see what it is. So we get five percent. Okay, that's pretty terrible. <laughs> and uh, the way that we we can improve this is by increasing the NPRO value, so the number of cells in our IVF index that we're searching. The only problem, so, well, let me show you what we normally do is this. So we'd write index NPRO and we set this to a higher number, uh, but we can't actually do that anymore because our index consists of, of let's say multiple indexes. So if we were just using this part, it'd be fine, we could do that. But because we've added OBQ, we can't access NPROBE in a normal way. So we have to um, we have to use something else. And that is, if I write it out, it's FIS extract index, and we need to write IVF. I know we're not using IVF, we're using IMI, but uh, we use this this here uh, for both of those, IMI or IVF, whichever one you're using. And then in here, we just pass our index. And then from here, so this is kind of extracted the IMI part or the IVF part of our index. And that means that we can now set the MPRO value. So we, we're going to set that to 14. And what we can do is di equals index search again. We can do execute k. And then we do recall. Hi. We get 44%. So it is increasing. Now, what happens if we say increase that to 100? We get 69. So you see, as we keep increasing this number, uh, the performance or the recall increases as well. Okay, so 69 looks like uh, the max we're going to get there. Although in reality, so I've tested this before, you, you can definitely get higher uh, than that. You should, in fact, well, slightly higher. You should be able to get up to about 75%. So, I mean, that is, that is, that index and through this we we do get very fast search times uh, so you see here 0 0.2 uh, is is uh, faster i think so time it index of search and we want to say xk and let's reduce this let's say to 50 see if we still get a okay 60. okay so i'm going to go for 60 for a 66 percent recall and then index search and this this loops through multiple times to get the uh, the average speed and, and we get 379 microseconds which is pretty fast so that is that last two of our comps indexes let me uh before we move on to the next one let me actually show you the sort of performance you can expect from from this one so this is what I got when, when I was testing on, on this index. So in the middle there, the magenta line, that's what we just built. Uh, you also have the, the non-optimized version, which is the, the blue line. And then I wanted to also include the, the flat index in there as well for comparison. The flat index is slower though. And plus again, the, the memory requirements for that flat index are sort of through the roof. This one is incredibly small. Not as small as IVF PQ or IVF ADC, but still pretty small. Okay, so this is our, our final composite index. And I think the most, well, the most performing one 
from what I've seen, as long as you don't mind increasing the memory usage quite a bit. So before we're using product quantization, we can use product quantization with this and we still get pretty good results actually. But the, the memory usage when we're using this with flat vectors is of course more. So what we're doing here, we still have that IVF component. So we're not using IMI this time, we're using IVF like we were in the first composite index. And then we're also adding a HNSW or hierarchical navigable small worlds index or, or graph. And uh, what it does is it uses IVF, splits our data into all of its different uh, cells or cells which each have a centroid uh, to identify which cells are closest to your query. And during search time, rather than comparing all of those centroids to your uh, search query, uh, so in the exhaustive search across all those centroids, we use HSW to approximate that and, and optimize or speed it up. So well, let's just go into HSW uh, very quickly first. So it's based on the small world graph theory. And I mean, this is what you can see on, on, the, on the screen right now. There's this sort of circle of all the nodes or vertices on the side. And then we have all the edges or, or links between them. And the theory is that in a very large network, so something like Facebook where there's billions of users, you will find the average degree separation, the average number of links between any two people is, is very small. I think with the Facebook one, it's something like incredibly small, like four or six. Uh, and that, that's from, you know, it's between the average between anyone, any two random people on Facebook are connected by only four to six uh, friends. And with this, what we find is that in, in these small world graphs, we have sort of long range and uh, short range links. Now, when we're traversing a, around that graph, so from one node or one vertex to another, we obviously move more quickly across the graph when it's a, a long range link. So let's say your friend, you're American, your friend has a friend over in India and they have a friend who is someone important in one of the villages in, in India, for example. You know, between you and that important person in a village in India, even though you don't know anyone in India, you have your friend, their friend over in India, and him. So there's three steps to get to him. Now, the step between you and your friend, you're, you're pretty close. You have a very high proximity, so it's a short range link. Between your friend and their friend over in India, that's a long range link. Now, HNSW takes this theory and applies it. So what it does is it takes long range links and splits them across different layers. So in this case, we define long range as geometrically far apart. And on the highest level of our HNSW graph, we have all of these long range links. And it's on that first level that we input our query vector and we first find those nearest neighbors. So we take our first few traversals across the links. And as we go down each layer, so each traversal, we go down a layer, the links become shorter and shorter range, so it becomes finer. And at the bottom layer, we, we finally get to what is our approximate nearest neighbor. Now that's what you can see here. So we start those, the entry point on layer two, which is our, our entry layer. That only has long range links. So we, we make a, a big jump from our entry point over here, over to here. Then we're onto the next step. So we move down a layer, down here. And then we go, okay, where's the, where's the nearest neighbor now? Uh, it's over here. Okay, so, so we go there and then we're on to the next step. So we, we again want to move down a layer. So now we're on our bottom layer and this is our final step. And so, okay, where's, where's our nearest neighbor? Uh, it's over here, okay? And then that's what we assume. We assume that this vertex or node is our nearest neighbor to our query vector. And the reason we do this is if you think, okay, up here we only have long range links that means there's very few nodes. Whereas down here, we probably have loads of nodes. So if we saw it down here, we'd be making loads of sets. 
Uh, whereas doing it like this, we can make big steps early on and then smaller steps later, which just minimizes the number of steps we need to take or the number of comparisons that we make. Now, how, how does this apply to IVF? We said, okay, this is an IVF and HNS W composite index. And this is what you can see now. So that HNS W process that we just went through, imagine all those points or those, those vertices, all of those are cell centroids from IVF. So what we're doing is rather than comparing, exhaustively comparing all of those cell centroids, we're just comparing a few of them or, or we're finding the approximate closest or nearest neighbor very quickly. And then we limit our exhaustive search scope to that single cell if, if the end probe value is, is one, obviously. Usually it's not going to be one, it's going to be greater. Yeah, but that's pretty much what we're doing with this IVF HNSW index. Now, because IVF HNSW optimizes the centroid or focuses on optimizing the centroid search portion, it makes more sense if we increase the number of centroids. Because if we increase the number of centroids, we reduce the number of uh, vectors within each cell. And because our optimized search point here, or the approximate search is the centroid comparison, and then once we're in those centroids, we're actually comparing all of the vectors in there. So we're performing an exhaustive search on the scope that we do uh, create. So what we do is we increase the number of centroids because that's the optimized portion and we reduce the number of vectors that will return in our, in our final scope because that's the unoptimized part of uh, this search. So to put all that together, we're going to use this string, uh, this index factory string. Uh, in, in terms of increasing speed, like I said, we will just increase this number here, which we will see. I'll show you another graph in a minute. Okay, um, so let's go up here. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'm going to compare, sorry, I'm going to modify this. So we're going to go IVF uh, 4096 followed on, with an underscore by HSW32. And what this means is we're creating uh, this many cell centroids or, or cells. And this 32 is how many connections or links each node or, or vertex has in the HSW graph. Uh, and then after that, we, we, we're using flat index here. Now, I said before, we, we can use PQ32, for example, here. Um, but the, the accuracy, the recall won't be as good. But you can use that, right? So if you if you need to reduce the memory usage with this, and it is very good, by the way, using PQ, uh, still you still get very good recall. Uh, you, you can do like that, like that. Now let's run that. Uh, we will do the search again. We'll check the recall. See what we get. Okay, so that has just finished, and we get this recall of twenty five percent. And now again, we're using the the emperor value of one by default. We probably want to increase this. So we'll come down here. Uh, we, do, we don't need to change the, the variable name. I'm, I'm just doing it um, because it bothers me leaving it as, as I'm I. Am I. Um, let, let's go 60 again. I mean, we do have a high number of, of cells here, so we probably want to increase it a bit more uh, than that. But you know, let's go with that, see what we get. And uh, we get 93%, which, okay, fair enough. That's uh, pretty good. Like straight out 93%. That's nice. So let's you know time it, see how fast that is. And you see, okay, so before we were getting with with the multi D ADC index, we were getting I think three, six, four uh, microseconds. Now we're getting five, four, four, a bit more, but it's hardly anything. And I mean, we're getting ninety percent. Before we were getting I think six. Uh, what did we get? Sixty six percent. So. But of course, at the same time, the memory usage for this is it's like half a gigabyte. But we can reduce that by, uh, instead of using flat index, we just change it to PQ32. Not like that. Uh, we change it to PQ32. And, and that improves it a lot. But we're not doing that here. We're just going to leave it flat. Uh, and I mean, let's just, so if we, for example, we know that the maximum number of cells here is 1496. Let's do an insanely high number. And this is the maximum performance that we're going to get out of it. So 
100 percent right because we're using flats of vectors we we can get that 100 percent point so yeah we can get very good performance 89 percent there and yeah it's super easy uh, so look 432 microseconds I, I mean for me i think that's very good so for that reason this is definitely one of my my favorite indexes it's just again the, the memory usage is, is high so let's have a look at the, the actual performance uh, search time and recall so i've included a few different number of cells here uh, for us to compare so like i said before if we're, we're the optimal the optimized part is the the ivf part or the, the the centroid search part the number of cells so we can increase the number of cells and that will decrease the, the search time but also decrease the recall a little bit as well but not that much so you know you can you can modify you can increase the number of cells ivf uh, vulnerable cells to improve the, the search time if you if you need to now i i mean that's it i didn't want to cover anything else in the video we've covered those those three indexes uh, the ivf adc multi multi d adc and ivf hn so uh, with those i think you can build some pretty cool indexes so uh, thank you very much for watching i hope it's been useful and i will see you in the next one